Hey guys, Miss Master One here, and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories Reverse Rebirth. So last time we made it past Hollow Bash, and we met up with Ansem. We've actually met up with a few people like King Mickey, and we've finally, like you know, got all our abilities that we're gonna be using for this game. And now it's time to move on to our, you know, first Ring of Worlds by selecting what we're gonna go do. So we we're pretty much gonna have the same cards as Sora, except for the Hundred Acre Wood, like I said last time. And in this episode, we are going to go to Agraba. And uh, right off the bat, we're actually going to get the key of beginnings. Like, the thing I'm going to say this about Riku is that. He doesn't actually have any interaction with, like, cutscenes of any, like, particular world that, you know, like, Agrabah, um, what else, like, Monstro, he's not gonna meet up with people like, Pino like, um, Aladdin from this way, he's not gonna meet up with Pinocchio from Monstro, he's not gonna meet up with, you know, Peter Pan from, like, Neverland and stuff like that, it's just that we're pretty much just gonna go run through these worlds, because, like, we're not, he doesn't make any interaction with anyone, so essentially what it is from most worlds, not all the worlds, but... Pretty much a lot of worlds from this mode is that we get the key of beginnings, we go right to the only room that's there, which is the boss room, and then we just leave. So it's going to be pretty short to go through this place, so I figure, you know, let's extend the video length a little bit by doing some battles. So, right here, actually what would be good is to demonstrate some more moves of, um, what is it, of dark mode for Riku. So let's see if we can just wait for all the enemies to attack and then break their cards. Working good so far. And all we need to break is three more to get that DP all the way up there. There we go. And now we have this. And we showed Dark Fyraga last time. Um, another move that he has is called Dark Break. Oh, I failed it right there. Dark Break. Uh, dark Break. You um, just basically like repeatedly land on the enemy and just like strike them from above. So it's pretty interesting. I like it. You have Dark Fyraga, which is like a fire spell except really powerful. Ow, I lost it. And you can also lose it right there like your... Um, dark mode so be careful about that but i believe another random joker card are you serious wow it's gonna make requirements for some rooms later really easy if i already have two right off the bat but yeah three main moves riku has dark break dark fyraga and dark aura D like in ranking from being m most powerful like least powerful to most powerful well i guess like the first two are opinionated I don't really know because Dark Fyraga only does one move and Dark Break does several moves, so maybe Dark Break's more powerful? I'm not 100% sure, but eh, whatever. It's still like, you know, you use whatever you have, and it's just like, you know, Dark Fyraga is better in some cases, like one move's better than the other. And yeah. I was like, what, are we gonna get a third random Joker card? But yeah, whatever. Let's use this to go through this door. But yeah. And of course, since we're going to start off just like Sora did in terms of like, you know, going from beginning to end of like floor wise, the rooms are going to be small when they start out and they're going to get much like larger as we continue on through the game. Like the, when we get up to the last few basement floors, like I want to say the last um, four or five or so like that, the rooms are actually going to get pretty large. Actually, the rooms are reasonably large, like even possibly in here, like uh, after like, like, you know, floor two or basement it's like floor 2, basement 11 is the same difference since they like they're come after each other in the same stories, so it's kind of, eh, you know, I may confuse the two since I just did Sora's story and these play pretty similar to each other, so sorry when that, whenever that happens, let's see. We could use another random Joker card since we already have two, but that's a dumb idea. Let's use uh, three Martial Awakening since we have two of those. Now, you'll also remember that Jafar was the boss of this world for Sora. Well, that's pretty much how it's going to be for Riku as well. Here's the boss door. Um, we just need an eight or, like, a three or higher card, excuse me, and then the door, and then the key door, like, the key, um, the key of beginnings to, what the hell is that noise? Sorry, there's just something out my window. And, um, you know, we pretty much fight all the same bosses. There's a few exceptions to Riku's story, but for all the world bosses, we, for the most part, we fight the same thing. So, let's go fight Jafar as Riku. We get brought into the battle right away. We don't even have any cutscene. It's just like, you know, you're placed right in. 
just like Sora. Well, not just like Sora, since we had a little cutscene before, but we have to fight the exact same way. And of course, just like Sora, we have to fight the lamp, not actually go for Jafar. Now, something I want to make a note of. We got Maleficent's card last time. Like, hang on, how do I access that? Okay. Um, and we also have a Fat Bandit card, since this is Agrabah, it gives us, like, a card that's unique to the world, and what it does is that if you attack the enemy from behind, which doesn't really help in this fight, since it's kind of moving all over the place, you get more damage off, but we can't really do that. But here's the thing with Maleficent's card, I'm just dodging for now. Um, it reduces your reload speed, but gives you more strength to your cards, but since we're playing as Riku, it's a complete buff towards fighting, because you reload instantly as it is, so... There's literally no, you know, drawback to doing this. Um, it's a little annoying to fight, you know, Iago or Jafar or whoever you wanna, like, you know, be technically correct about. Um, but since you don't actually reload at all, actually, um, ow, let's break that. Um, here's King Mickey's card. What it does is that it re- it re -heals you, like, you know, you regain HP, and it also reloads your cards, so that's what King Mickey does. But yeah, it does, like, n nothing to affect you aside from, you know, giving you more strength. So there's literally no downside to using Maleficent's card. In fact, I feel like that's kind of the reason why they gave that to you to start out with, is because you can have an advantage in whatever you're fighting. So, really, there is no... I, I just completely wasted a move right there. There is no downside to using Maleficent's card unless it, like, affects, like, the cards coming back specifically. Like, like once you reload, the cards, like, form back slowly, but... Since you have instantly reloading, you know, your cards, it's not a big deal at all. And you know what? Hang on, I'll use that, um, Majesty card once we have, like, you know, all the attacks are gone like that. So now we'll use the King Mickey card to raise the platforms up, and let's just, you, you know what, why the hell not? Let's use, oh, I was gonna use Mickey, but that works too, Dark Raga. I honestly don't think Dark Mode is that good here, because, you know, you end up using all these moves, and the only thing that actually works decently is Dark Aura, so you have to be careful with that. Because if you use Dark Break, it misses, like, practically all the time, and he has, like, no health left, are you kidding me? And, where'd he go? Oh, we lowered the platform all the way back down, isn't that great? Uh, part of me wants to kind of lose Dark Aura, just, or, like, Dark Mode, specifically. Oh, you can stop that, you can stop that, you can stop that, you can stop that, stop it! Oh my god. He does, I move forever. And, um, really because, like, the way you're gaining, like, a lot of speed, technically, when you're doing that, so it's a little annoying, because you tend to miss the target a lot more, especially when you use specific moves in Dark Mode. But he's not that bad. So, there you go, that was Jafar as Riku. And, of course, we get Jafara's card, and just like Maleficent and the other cards, we don't require any CP to use it, so we can pretty much have it in our deck at all times, and we're gonna boost Riku's Dark Power, because now this is gonna give us, um, a longer-lasting Dark Mode, and it's gonna take less time to actually reach Dark Mode, so that's really important you level that up. And now if you'll excuse me, I just want to take a sec to look at my status real quick, what's our experience. Um, to next level is 216, I guess we'll just keep going up. Oh, what the fuck did I just- what? I just land on an enemy I couldn't see, um... Okay, I'll take that, whatever. But you'll see, like, it may not, like, look that way at first, but it actually is gonna take less time to inevitably... Let's use King Mickey. Oh, actually, a uh, slate you can do is Holy Burst if you can combine, um... King Mickey with two, um, your of your attack cards. So that does, like, you know, I think it does, I don't know if it heals you, but it also does some magic-type damage, so it can be n useful. But, you know, it's hard to explain stuff. I mean, there isn't that much to Riku. In fact, it's actually pretty simple for Riku. He's a lot less, like, you know, complicated to use than Sora, and don't take that out of context, please. <laughs> um, but really, Riku is, I definitely feel like he's a lot easier, of a, he, his mode's a lot easier than Sora's mode, because you already have your strategy picked out. Um, what's my status now? Not the world card, you idiot. Um, the status. Yeah, I'll just skip on these enemies. Um, and you just pretty much have to leave the world. You'll have to create the path yourself as opposed to, um, it being already made for you. Like, if most, like, pretty much in Sora's story, um, once you beat the boss, it immediately led you to the final room that was, like, you know, going to, um, fucking heartless, uh, 
that was going to pretty much be the moment's reprieve with the save point and then you go into the next floor, but does it give you a moment's reprieve? I forget. Or is it just the room that you create that's the final room? It's been a little while since I recorded this, so I can't quite remember. We'll see that when we get there, but I do believe it's just like whatever you create as the final room is the room that you go into before leaving the world, so we'll find out very shortly. Oh no, it's already open, my bad. You can see right there, so it does lead to a moment's reprieve. Since it's already open, or Conqueror's, Re Conqueror's Respite, that's what I meant. Moment's Reprieve still has the save point, so I got the two confused, but, you know, same difference. So we'll make our way up here, and touch the save point to regain health, and let's go through this door. Now, as you can plainly see, there's actually nothing on the exit hall of Basement 11. You'll sometimes get that, where it's just like, you have to go, th you like go exit a world and there's nothing here and you just go up to the next world, but sometimes you do get some story implemented scenes. But I do believe we have a cutscene coming up right here, so I'll be quiet. I have identified the scent. It is Riku. Riku, you say? Has he emerged from the realm of darkness? His existence, it was once doubled in the darkness. Fascinating. That's why you mistook him for the superior. The dark power given to Riku facilitated his escape from its realm. What I want to know is... Why he appeared here in Castle Oblivion? That's really quite simple. His existence resonates with that of another hero. Sora? Is in the castle? He arrived earlier. Marluxia is already using Namine's unique powers to meddle with Sora's heart. Without even bothering to consult us. It seems he desperately wants the Keyblade Master for himself. What a foolish plan indeed. Sora's is not such an interesting existence. The entity that holds true value is Riku, the Hero of Darkness. So yes, we have just found out that Sora is at, a, you know, I said this earlier, but Sora is in the castle with us right now, and we're both venturing through, and it's already explained to us that, you know, Namine is using her power to meddle with Sora's heart, but of course, since we played Sora's story, we already know the whole thing that happens there. But, of course, we are going to go through Riku's story, where it explains even, even more stuff, and it actually extends upon Sora's ending, meaning we see a little bit after Sora's ending, if we were to go on chronologically. And I believe that, I think that's pretty much going to cover it for this episode. It is a bit of a short one, but I am going to say this Riku story is not going to be nearly as long as Sora's story. In fact, in like a few more videos, we're probably going to be almost halfway. So, you know, whatever happens, happens. So, I've been Miss Master One. Thank you guys for watching. This has been episode three of Kingdom Hearts Rechain Memories Reverse Rebirth. And I will see you guys in episode four for when we start our next world. So. I've been Miss Master One. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.